change effectiveness by a willingness to push forward legislation that's not popular with the American people and have literally multiple dozens of members cast politically suicidal votes, then yeah, Speaker Pelosi was effective, but I don't think that's the direction we want to keep going. Welcome back to Harbaugh. That was Pennsylvania Congressman Jason Altmaier on Hardball Monday. That's yesterday. It looks like Speaker Pelosi will stay on as the House Democratic leader without a formal challenge so far. The fight is for the number two spot between Steny Hoyer and Jim Clyburn. But no matter who wins, is it good for Democrats to move forward with the same team? And that's my question to Congressman Anthony Weiner of New York. Sir, is it a smart move to stay with the same team after you've been battered? Well, it is the same team that took us from the wilderness of the minority in 2006 and 2008 and built a winning coalition. Look, she was a speaker that was doing the will of her. But you lost all the seats you won in 2006 and yeah, 2008 but she and did. more. Yeah, but you, you, you can make a list as long as your arm about why that would happen. It certainly isn't because our speaker did the bidding of the caucus and passed health care reform, financial regulation, helped bail out the economy. Look, the speaker acts on behalf of the body, and overwhelmingly Democrats were saying, we want to try to solve these problems. I mean, of all the people that deserve blame here, I think Nancy is the last of them. The president didn't do a good job. The, the health care took too long. The Senate jacked us up more times than I can imagine. Certainly wasn't yeah. Nancy Pelosi. Well, why are the Republicans jumping on her everywhere? Even in Philly, when I went home a couple weekends ago, all it was was ads attacking, Republican ads or outside ads, attacking Pelosi, even against candidates who weren't even incumbents. They were blaming, blaming her or blaming them for her. What do you make of this target practice on her? What's it all about? It's about what it always is. Speakers get caricatured. Your former boss, Tip O'Neill, the same exact way, Newt Gingrich. It kind of goes with the, the territory. But the yeah. one thing we don't want to let happen is we don't want to let the Republicans choose our leadership. Yeah, they, they may say that, they, that they're going to target her. And you, you watch. I mean, we're going to go after John Boehner. He's going to be the face of an unpopular Republican majority for the next couple of years. Uh, that's just the way it goes. But if you okay. want to think about it, you and I would be sitting here a year ago saying that she was the most powerful speaker since Sam Rayburn. I think that's still true today. Minority I leader. think so. Look, personally, if you ask my political analysis, Congressman, I think she's been the strongest speaker I can think of in terms of internal, internal discipline. I've never seen this kind of discipline by a party, a Democratic Party, in my lifetime. Let's take a look at this comment by Michael Capuano up in the Boston Globe. Quote, if the Red Sox came in and lost every game of the year and they kept the manager at the end of the year, that's a problem. That's what we seem to be on the verge of doing. The thing that amazes me, this is Capuano, is the hubris that no one has stepped aside voluntarily. Now, Michael Capuano, Capuano is a progressive. He's a liberal of the old school. He's got Tip O'Neill's old seat, Cambridge and surrounding areas. He's not one of these Southern guys. Why do you think he's speaking out? Well, first of all, Mike Capuano is one of the smartest guys in the House, and he'd make a great speaker at some point as well. Uh, but look, there is this, this sense that we, Nancy does have an opportunity, that, 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 that she should have an opportunity to, to decide what the terms are that she leaves on. But I just want to make sure it's very clear, and I don't think Mike Capuano would say this either. To say that litany of losses was because of Nancy Pelosi, you could put anyone in that speaker's chair. If they had to deal with the tough hand that she had to deal with this past two years, she'd get roughed up pretty good, too. And I have to tell you something. She is, did the will of not only the, the, the Congress, but a lot of members of the American people who say the things that we okay. did were necessary. Okay, one last question, yes or no. Is she staying primarily to keep Steny Hoyer out of that leadership? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't believe oh, that's come her on, motivation. You're laughing, but you don't believe that's the real. <laughs> if she had somebody that she likes to see here, would she get out of the way? She, she's trying to box out Wiener, it's pretty clear. No, you're, you're you. This is dodging. What is it, Craig? This, I'm sorry. I don't want to dodge you know, your question. You know the inside. Is no, it primarily I, she doesn't think Steny Hoyer should be the Democratic leader of the House? Is that I primarily believe, why she's I, hanging in there? No, I don't believe that's his. I believe that she knows the path getting back to being the Speaker. I believe she okay. thinks she can do it, and I think she can too. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us, uh, Congressman Anthony Weiner.